right, all right, all right. It is Wednesday night. I know it is is after nine where some of you guys are. It's just eight thirty here in Colombia. Colombia is one of the few countries in the world that actually just has one time zone. It's just one. That's it. It doesn't have an Eastern time. Well, I guess a lot of countries do. But uh, when it comes to time zones, Colombia just has the one time zone. The only reason we change is because you all change. Let me switch these earphones around. My name is Andre of Andre and Andre's Love Crossing Borders. I see we got 37 people in the building. Click that like button. I like you. Make sure that you like us too because we already know. Oh, we're coming next. <laughs> <laughs> Once I established this as a place of truth, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, Oprah is coming next. Oprah will be coming next, so make sure that you click that like button. Once again, we like you. Make sure that you like us too. Let me make sure that the Wi-Fi is good. Oh, looking good, looking good. Right now, we're using our router, our portable router that we take everywhere around the world with us. I'm telling you guys, you got to get that router, man. If you do any online work. You're a perfect example. Perfect example. You know, guys always see the little routers that we always have with us. For example, this is one of them. I'll show you the black one that we often use. You guys have seen that one a lot. This one is a white portable router that we use around the world, right? And all you do is just push the little button in the middle, tells you've got Wi Fi or whatever you need, right? That's the cool part about these little small routers. And this one is connected by Bluetooth through your, so as long as you got some eSIM data on your phone, you can connect the eSIM data to this router and it connects to over 20 different electronic devices. So you can have your computer set up, your boy's computer set up, your girl's computer set up, three cell phones and a partridge in a pear tree, and you'd still be able to use one of these portable routers. You got to get one to take with you, fellas, around the world. Or even if you're at home, for example, our Wi-Fi went out earlier uh, yesterday. Well, guess what this week is? It's Easter week here in Colombia, so nobody's working. So you're not going to get anybody in Colombia to come out and do some work. Talk about my Wi-Fi went out until Monday. Yeah, next Monday. But since we have the portable routers, no problem for us. As you can tell, the Wi-Fi looks oh so well. So shout out to you guys. If you're interested in getting a portable router, make sure just hit me up in the email or I'll just make sure I'll just drop the link uh, for the Amazon so you guys be able to take advantage of it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's worth his weight in gold. Shout out to my man. Speaking of worth his weight in gold, my man David in the building. Shout out to you. He said, Diddy better call Russ. Yes, Indonesia is one of the countries where there is no extradition, where you can go there and the United States cannot sit back and just go after you. So that's that's one one country right there to get to Indonesia. Yes, because Oprah is coming next. Oprah coming next. Yes, she <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> Once I establish this as a place of truth, yeah. oh yeah. They've already put people in jail that has a little bit more finances than Oprah. So don't be surprised if certain things start coming out on your girl eventually. I'm not wishing evil on anybody, but what I'm saying is if you've done evil, take it from me. And take it from your boy that's been in affairs. Y'all, you guys are talking, you know how you guys talk to lead attorney all the time when a, a case is going on? Sometimes you need to hear from those that have been convicted by the federal government, not just those that are attorneys of the federal government. As a former convicted felon of the federal government, known as the United States government, I can tell you, we had a saying in the feds, and it's called, feds don't waste any ink. Feds don't waste any ink. And what do we mean by that? Those who are in prison know that the federal government has a 98% conviction rate. Much of those are people pleading cases. We already know that statistically between state, fed, uh, city, and county, that over 85% of all cases are plea bargains. If you didn't know that, now you know. 85% of when they arrest you, most people either are found not guilty or they take a plea bargain. That's why the system moves so fast in the United States. Well, under the federal system is like this. 
the feds don't kick in your door unless they have true evidence to kick in your door because they know that lawsuits can fly everywhere and they know that they can tarnish reputations and more lawsuits to fly everywhere so when the federal government kicks in your door it's not like the state the federal government can knock on your door come on come with us the states will try to kick in your door to catch you ha i got you and you can say i ain't got nothing and the states will be like okay we're gonna catch you next time right that's the states and the counties but the federal government they will wait for years do i know dudes in the fed right now the federal government sat back and looked at them dudes for 10 years knew everything that was going i know dudes that was out of the game married three businesses deep two homes and two dogs they ain't ain't sold nothing ain't stole nothing in years ain't haven't even been that age they in their 30s and the federal government come kicking in the door for what they did at 22 and now they're doing 22 years true story true stories i know several guys the federal government does not come as soon as they get the, as soon as they get the uh that's why they built all these cases up on trump but the but it's, even though Trump's really not as much fed as they are state, but federal government take it from your boy that's been convicted, spend a ten piece in a biscuit, and a biscuit means your probation, right? So I got the ten piece in the biscuit, five years probation. And I'm telling you, when the federal government says, I can see if the state boys came after Diddy, I can say, okay, you know, it's just it's the state boys. They gonna try to find some pin something on him, not the feds. Feds don't waste no ink. They don't print out indictments and not get the conviction. 98% conviction rate. It don't matter. Dude, I've been in, in, in the feds with billionaires. It don't matter how much money you got. I don't care how much celebrity you got. I've been in there with the NF. I have been in jail. I used to say this in the feds. I have been locked up with every profession except an astronaut. Senators. Ex-congressmen. Other than an astronaut and a ex astronaut and a president, that's what we used to say. Astronaut and a president, ex congressman, NFL players, NBA players. I'm telling you, everybody been my bunkie. Pastors of mega churches, businessmen that I was watching on the news, and I see them walking through the compound two days later. So when I sit back and I when I tell you guys, I'm talking about one of my closest friends were part of the Medellin cartel back in the day. I didn't even see, now I understand the, 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 uh, the scope of the Medellin cartel. But when I was in the feds, these were just a bunch of old dudes. These were just a bunch of cool dudes. The Cali cartel dudes, they were in there. I, the, 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 dude, I was there when Gotti came through, okay? The Teflon Don. So when I sit back and I say, uh-oh, Diddy, uh-oh, take it from a man of experience. When I sit back, uh, when I saw them kick in that man's door and put them cuffs on his kids, and then I saw one of his boys, the white dude that was at the airport with them, get locked down, all they're doing is trying to build a snitch case on Diddy now. All they're doing, take it from me, I'm telling you, all they're doing now is trying to get as many people as they can to snitch on Diddy. It don't matter if it's Cuba Gooden Jr. or or Prince uh, uh Prince Philip, whatever his name is. Prince Williams. It doesn't matter. That's how the Fed work. They either want you to take a plea bargain, and this is how Diddy case is. This is how they do with dudes that got money. You ready? They make you spend the amount of time that you're gonna have. For example, okay, Diddy, you messing with them kids. You know that. You, you, you done got caught up. Now, these are just accusations. This is not real life. I'm just giving you an example. And what they what they do, what they say is, okay, you say you worth a billion. I, I, I swear, this is how the feds do. Give us 300 million and you looking at fitting. Now, regular mere mortals like the rest of us, Oh man, it ain't it ain't, it ain't it ain't sitting like that. The one thing that the feds do, you may be a baller in your city, in your neighborhood. You may be sitting on two, three hundred thousand. 
the feds know that you don't you don't realize feds don't waste no ink you young feds will let you burn to that th through that 300 thou in attorney fees and once your attorney says well he broke then they come with the plea bargain the whole time your attorney make you think that you got a chance because your little measly two, three hundred thousand got you an attorney. Now with the federal government, once again, 98 percent conviction rate. Like I said, I could see if state boys came through the door like Trump did, like they did on Trump. OK, cool. State boys. like All right. Pay them off. You good. Federal government, bruh, bruh, take it from your boy. I've, you you name the profession name it i've seen it from construction worker dude i've seen hillbillies from up in the mountains that was that was that was making crystal meth up in the hills of kentucky i've met dudes that were that were that were some of the best with some of the top real estate moguls i'm talking about two three hundred mil worth of real estate i'm talking about i met dudes that were doing man, i met these one young dudes these dudes were only like 19, just turned 20. Two young black boys out of small town of Michigan. They had this book called Banking in Silence. You can still get it. It's about $150, $200. They come out a new version every, every year. If you don't know nothing about banking and moving money offshore, this book, Banking in Silence, this is how I learned about it from these little young, two young black dudes. They discovered how to take what was it it wasn't credit cards it was like something had to do with food stamp money or something and how to ship that money overseas they had opened up a bank they had learned to open up a bank these were kids open up a international bank accounts with no names up, up behind them uh, uh meaning that they they told they say dre all with international offshore accounts all you need is that banking number whoever knows the number cat long before crypto no crypto, you got to know the code. Long before crypto, these young dudes were like, all you need to know is your, your, your digits to your, no matter what country you put your money in, blah, 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 blah. I was like, what? Yeah, we were sending money. These kids, how they got caught with just getting, sending too much money overseas. And they didn't know the laws of the $10,000 once you once you know you get red flagged once you send over ten thousand dollars in one transaction in the united states so they send in like chunks of money to their international accounts not realizing oh you kids didn't already hit that ten thousand dollar max and the feds just came knocking on the door and told mom and daddy what the kids was doing and your kids are of age. Like I say, these kids were 19, two black, young black kids, just nerdy, every everyday kid with nothing thug about them, just regular, everyday nerdy kids. These kids had got over like five, six hundred thousand dollars in a few months shipped into other countries. So when I say I have seen every walk of life in federal prison, every walk of life, and they might be coming for J2. There is no, that when they say 98% conviction rate, brothers, when y'all hear that from now on, y'all gonna hear some people say, well, they're gathering their evidence. They've already gathered evidence. Feds do not put their footprint on your door unless they got the evidence. They either got some snitches, which is normally how it works. This is how the feds work. A snitch got caught, right? Doing some crazy stuff. Well, I got it from Diddy. And so, really? Yeah. Well, here's what we need you to do. We need you to, we're going to wire you. We're going to, well, first we're going to interview you. And then we're going to take that interview and we're going to use that in court. Then we're going to wire you. You hang out with Diddy and his boys and get us as much evidence as possible. And we'll, we're, you're looking at 52, boy. Now, if you help us with this Diddy case, we'll drop it down to two. That's how, dude, bruh, I've seen dudes that, shout out to my African brothers, but y'all dirty in the feds. I'm going to say this again. Shout out to my African brothers. Yeah, I'm telling feds stories. Shout out to my African brothers. I'm going to come back to the shout outs, guys. Y'all some dirty dudes, man. African dudes will snitch ain't never met you a day in their life. 
Man, I know African dudes that have sat up there and snitched on brothers just because I'm black and he black. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I got 25 years. I know, I know one African dude. This dude came in in January with 25 years. But individuals that they that the feds just could not convict for nothing. They told this dude, if you just for, for nine months snitch on people you ain't never met before, we'll send you back to your home country. And that's exactly what he did. For nine months, literally snitched on dudes. He ain't ne- point fingers at men and women. He ain't never seen a day in his life. By October, by I, because he was coming in and out of, he was telling us what was going on. He coming in and out of the camp. He coming in and out of the prison. We're like, man, where you been? Uh, to court. You snitching again, man. I'm getting, I'm down to 12 years now. But dude, by October, he was packing his bags, going back home to whatever country in Africa he went. And I've seen so many African dudes do that one. And I ain't coming against my African brothers, but I'm telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. Y'all some dirty dudes. I done seen y'all snitch on each other. Let y'all get caught for doing some some legal trends. Man, please. <laughs> I've been down. I've been like down with mafia dudes. Like I said, John Gotti and them boys. And I'm not talking about John's way. Well. I'm talking about same camp. Same, I mean, same compound. Until they shipped him over to uh, uh, the Supermax in Denver. Man, I'm telling y'all, man, Diddy in trouble. Y'all ain't heard my commentary, but now y'all hearing it. From my experience, not just, you know, like I said, with lead attorney, he could talk about the case and everything. I could tell you about the feds. You could talk about the case all day long, but I'm going to tell you how the feds work. For real, for real. Diddy ain't going to walk away from this one. And if he halfway do, it's, it's too many. Here's what the feds do. They build up a bunch of cases. So if let's, let's say Diddy got seven indictments. I had 13. I had 13 indictments. I was looking at 165 years. Third, I'm going to say this again. Your boy had 13 indictments. I'm looking at 165. When they kicked in the door, I'm watching Rap City, <laughs> right? I'm watching Rap City back in the day. Shout out to Rap City fans. They, I hear the rumbles coming up the stairs. I go running out. The, I had a chick on my on my lap. I threw this chick on the on the, on the ground because I recognized that rumble. I'm running toward the kitchen from the living room while everybody else still watching Rap City, right? <laughs> they wonder why Andre running. Man, I get ready to jump out the kitchen window. They coming up from the basement. They've been in the basement all morning. All I'm hearing is clack, 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 clack. Just everything aimed at me. I'm ready to jump out the window. All I see is police dogs in black uniforms. And all I remember was the one officer saying, don't do it, son. Son, please, son, don't do it. You don't want this, son. Don't do it. Bag up out that window, boy. Just bag on up out that way. I was like, I got, got on the ground with everybody, you know, on, on the, I got on the kitchen floor. They brought two, three more people in the kitchen and on the kitchen floor. And come to find out, it was a snitch. And just about everybody in the feds because of somebody got caught with doing something they had no business doing. Had no, this is the funny part about snitches. Most federal snitches have nothing to do with your case. It could be a dude that you knew from back in the day. The dude that snitched on us had a girlfriend that lived in North Carolina. This dude was a worker. He ain't had no car. He went and stole a car and took it across state lines. If you steal anything, 
and take it across state lines. It is no longer a state case. It's a federal case. Took it on his way to North Carolina, got stopped by the by the, uh, uh, the state troopers. That's no longer a state case. That's a federal case because they tracked the, tracked the vehicle back the way he, to the state that he originally took it from. He looking at five, six years. First thing come out of his mouth, I know we all can get the big fish on some big. Ain't got nothing to do with us. We he trying to track down some coochie in North Carolina that had left him in the in the other state where we were. And I've seen that happen to so many dudes. Dudes snitch on them for 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 uh crimes that they're being convicted of that ain't got nothing to do with it. I could see if you was in the game with the rest of us, you ain't even in the game. And dude, straight st yeah, him, 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 him. I saw this. So, now, the part that saved me, I wonder, like, oh, what, Dre, how you didn't get 165 years there? What happened? They couldn't prove most of my indictments, but they could prove just enough of my indictments to get me a 10 piece. They don't have to prove all of Diddy's indictments. All they got to do is prove just enough. All they got to do is prove just enough. Just, if Diddy's got seven, all they got to do is prove three. That's how the feds work. They know we may not be able to prove all this, but we don't need it all. Jail is jail is jail. They don't have to prove every, you better believe every, even the states, every state indictment that R. Kelly got, shout out to Kells. They didn't prove every indictment. They proved enough of the indictments for Kells to do the time that he's doing now. So when I say, and when we all say who, who, who deal with the feds, feds don't waste, as soon, soon as I saw, I said, that's feds. Oh, shoot, he gone. <laughs> he gone. Feds don't waste no ink. They don't waste printing anything. They don't waste printing in the like like y'all see that indictment that the lead attorney's been showing the the P D D K. They don't waste no ink. That's what we mean by the ink. That when they print off that indictment and print off that case, you getting convicted. Now since you got money, let's let's talk. That's exactly how they do it. You got money. Or you own property or lands. There are dudes that are sitting on 25 years because they were able to give the, the federal government 25 million. Give us that 25 million, your three yachts and your two mansions. We'll give you 27. 27, you're going to do about 80, 80, 85 to 89% of that. Because feds ain't got no get off on a good, you know, ain't no, ain't no parole. For the Fred, for the feds. You just get out after you're done doing your bit and you do probation. So Puffy in that place of negotiation, that most of us ain't got that negotiation money. Those the Cali cartel, when you guys watch Netflix and they got sent to the states, they were at the point of negotiation. Like what like the old dude told me, I was walking the track with him. That, and I like I said, I'm still I'm young, I'm naive. I don't realize my no Cali cartel, Medellin. Car, I, don't, I don't understand on that level. I know about Miami level. I'm working with them boys, but I ain't really working with you know like Scarface in them, right? So I'm walking on the compound dude. He said I came out of three. This was back. In the 90s. And we just walking cool, dude. And he just telling me, he said, Dre, you know, I, I had to come out of 300 million to get my 30 years. He had to come out of three. He had to give the federal government of the United States when he got sent over part of the Cali cartel. Three hundred million dollars in order to get 30 years. I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm, I'm, hey, hey, David, I'm trying to tell him what I know, man, not what I heard. This is what I know. This is what I experienced. These are the people that I met. These people were part of my life for 10 years coming in and out, out and in, bro. I know what these dudes have had to go through in order to get the little time that they got. And like I said, the feds do not 
they do not come as soon as they get the evidence bruh they build it they do they let diddy if they knew about diddy doing the, the fifth his white parties right they knew about him doing the white party era no matter let's let's start building this case man they will wait five ten years and will then they'll kick you in the door why they got five ten years worth of evidence but the media will say well they're gathered they're they're at the house getting computers and they're gathering ev fluff all they're doing is confirming the evidence with computers and everything else that they've gathered of the evidence that they already got back here remember i said let's say diddy sitting on on uh uh sitting on seven indictments they like I, we got evidence for three let's see if we can get about let's go to the house see if we can get him on five that's where the feds at right now oh he going down if he don't go down man he got some information on dudes he got information on politicians but jeffrey epstein had information on politician on politician on politician and they still locked him down so they say we ain't seen a headstone yet for jeffrey I'm just putting it out there for my experience, guys. So just in case you guys ever wonder what my take of it is, now you see what my take of it is and why it's like that. Why it's like that. Shout out to you guys being here. Let me hit the super chats and then I'm going to come back. Shout out to my man. He said, uh, LJ in the building. LJ says, he said, uh, things coming out about celebrities. Cat Williams said it. Cat Williams said it first, 2024. Cuz. Did he like the party? You got to tell him no. You got to tell him no. Shout out to you, brother, with the 199 Southern Vegan. My man, Will, the thrill in the building. Shout out to you, brother. Great moderator. He said, evening, Andre and Andrea chat fam. I uh, hope everybody is feeling blessed tonight. We are. Did he? Eh. Did he, son? Did he didn't even come for his kids, man. Did he didn't even come for the boys. Man, what type of parenting is that? <laughs> Diddy said, he didn't even come for the kids. Martin love the kids. Marty, Martin love the kids. Diddy don't love the kids. He said, push that uh, that like button. Uh, support black male media. We got 129 people in here early. Shout out to you guys being here. We're going to talk about, because that's the first thing that came to my mind was russell russell uh, uh simmons and all the other dudes that i met off in the feds that wish they had done this like per, let me put it like this shout out to timothy bright in the building with the two dollar he said i don't think that they will catch him a uh, puff of smoke yep <laughs> i'm gonna tell you guys something if it were me now with my fed experience there is no way y'all gonna catch me nah 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 Nah. If I had known then what I know now, nah. If I knew countries then like I know countries now, nah. There is no way I would have went out like R. Kelly. There is no way I would have went out like R. Kelly. You have been around the world. And you come back to get like, man, I'd have been like, oh, Michael Jackson. Catch me if you can. This is the finish. I'm done. Think about when was the last time Mike was in the States prior to his demise. Other than getting ready for the tour, Mike wasn't hanging out in the States. Mike at everybody else's castle. He hanging out with czars and emperors, kings and nobles. Mike, for about a good year or two, wasn't nowhere near that ranch. That thing could have burned to the ground. Mike wouldn't know about it for three days. Mike was not in the States until he came for that final tour. That was it. He was doing it like Diana Ross, like Tina Turner, like Sade. I give you a tour, but I'm out. Man, there is no way. If I was kidding, you know, man, I, that's the one dude. I ain't going to even lie. As far as 
knowing what I know about conviction, that, man, there was no man, get get the man. I'd have been on. Do you know, man? <laughs> remember the scene in Shawshank Redemption, like the last five minutes. My man, you know he he's sand in the bottom of the boat, and in the far off distance, he sees a man come a walking. And it's Morgan Freeman walking up on him. That would have been me if I was R. Kelly walking up on Russell Simmons. <laughs> See what I'm saying? We both here in Indonesia. <laughs> Man, I had so many Indonesian hits. Step in the name of love would have been in Indonesia. 12 play. Would they would have been out of came out an Indonesian version of 12 play. You remind me of my Jeep would have been in Bali, the best remix of the year. I'd have been winning awards in India as well as Indonesia. Man, I'd have been learning Russia. I'm all up in China. Yeah, we're going to talk about those countries, man, because no way in it. What? Please. They'd have made a movie about surviving R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly, surviving R. Kelly. That should have been the name of the movie. I'm R. Kelly and I survived my own. <laughs> Please. There's no way in the world I'd have went down like, like that, man. Hell no. <laughs> uh, shout out to my man, Ethan. Them Colombian boys at it again. He said, wow, you are talking about something most Americans have never heard. Wow. The U.S. prison system... Uh, must be insane yes it is it's all about that dollar if you got the money then you can buy the amount of soon as he ethan the moment they kicked in the doors all i thought was okay <laughs> i thought <laughs> i thought about r kelly i'm not black i'm oj okay, okay. that's what i was thinking with, about 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 diddy all i thought was Okay, how much you gonna pay for how much time? Because I know how it works. They don't tell you mere mortals, you average citizens who, you know, safety, safety, war on drugs, war against crime. Now the war is against trafficking. Got it. Very important issues. But they don't tell you guys what we know. Why? Are you attorneys? No. Are, are, are you, are you? Prison guards? No, I ain't never been no damn prison guard. Uh, wait, well, have you ever been a judge? No. I know more about feds because I was a federal prison, who, federal prisoner who knew about the moves of the prison guards, the federal judge, the attorneys, the transcriptionists. Man, I know more about them than they know about me. Why? Because once you on lockdown, we all talk about our experiences. You might not even, you might not talk about your time. Now I didn't talk about our time because a lot of guys, you know the rule, don't talk about your time in the feds. Or when you're on lockdown, how much time you get? You know? Why? Because somebody else might be jealous. I got 10. I remember I opened up my big mouth and I said, I got 10 years. And they laughed at me. I, I never forget that. We play, we were playing spades or dominoes, right? And uh I'm, I'm playing there with a few few of the brothers, and the brothers were like, uh, uh, well, young blood, how much time you get? I said, Man, I man, I got 10 years, man. I just come from a from my bunk, feeling sad for myself. Not crying, but just feeling sad for myself. Got 10 years in this month. I only been I only been on the compound like three weeks, right? Like five, 10 years. Damn. I'm gonna be 33 when I come out this month. 23 years old i'm listening you know see what i'm saying heavy d heavy d and, and uh uh and guy is on the radio i come out it's cash money millionaires <laughs> see what i'm saying i'd have missed the whole biggie air the 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 whole my, i missed the whole growth of the tupac rap era the whole biggie rap era just to let you guys realize how, how how much time I was down. But realize Biggie and Tupac's lives were short. These guys were like 25, 26 anyway. But I miss 
from their first hit to their last hit, I'm still locked down. From the time that these dudes was with Digital Underground all the way to in in in, in, in Biggie with uh, 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 Junior Mafia, all the way until every dance I make, every move you, I'm I'm locked down for all that. All that. I didn't get a chance to, it's in, I, maybe I want to have thug life on my stomach, but I didn't get a chance to walk through that era. Why? Didn't impact me. All I saw was dudes crying on the compound when, when uh, Tupac died. They didn't kill Pac. That's only th on, that's my only Pac experience. That's my only Pac story when I saw all the young dudes in tears. That was it. Oh, I was locked down for the OJ conviction. Oh, man, the white, the white people went crazy. So when I said my little 10 piece, I was like, until I heard the years that these other brothers got. 54, 24, 72. And basically for the same uh, madness that I was doing. 72, 48. Them dudes told me, young boy, if you don't shut up, you about to go home. I'm like, what? What do you mean I'm about to go home? I got 10 years of my life is gone. 10 years. I'm ready to throw my, my spades hand in until they told me how much time they were looking at. I mean, that they had been convicted of. I mean, man, bruh, my first the dude, I'm I'm in I'm in MCC Chicago playing dominoes with the El Rukians. For all you Blackstone Rangers, anyone? Any of you Shot Town boys think I'm lying? You like, oh, he must have been locked down then for real. If he down there with them El Rukian boys in the Black Blackstone Rangers, anyone? My Spades partner is Jesse Jackson's brother. I said it, Jesse's brother. He's sitting up there telling me stories about when him and him and his brother used to run trains on Shaka Khan. I got another book. Not the Shaka Khan. You and Jesse was running trains on Shaka Khan. I feel for good. I think I love good. on Shaka Khan. I'm young. I ain't supposed to be hearing these stories. Shaka Khan was an icon still, man. You and Jesse Jackson running trains on Shaka. <laughs> and y'all didn't invite me. Y'all didn't invite me. So when I said I'm locked down where every walk of life, dude, Mexican mafia dudes, Asian mafia dude, dude, I'm locked down with everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> he said, yeah, because so the U.S. prison system is something. He said, let's go. Yes, sir. Shout out to my man Kings in the building. Did you see I got a pass? Yes, sir. Shout out from them Tampa boys, my man Green Lantern. We in Tampa, 813, Trigger City, let's get it. 813, Trigger City, let's get it. Shout out to you guys. We got 157 in the building. Click that like button. We like you. Make sure you like us too. Shout out to you guys, B. It's a lot of you guys up in here, man, tonight. I don't know if I get a chance to do a shout out for everybody. Shout out to my man Keith and with the replay crew. We in Tampa, 813, Trigger City, let's get it. Yes, sir. Nerdy girls for the win. Always. <laughs> Always. Always. And tonight we're going to talk about the sister, the LGBTQ sister that tore up the beauty salon in Thailand. The one that was, I'm homeless, help me. My fellow passport bros gave us some money, put her in a hotel room. The people in Thailand gave her a job, which is rare for a foreigner to get. A little me, just a menial job, but just a job. Gave her a place to stay, and we're gonna talk about what she did. Didi, better call. Yeah, better call. Shout out to my man Twan in the building. Salute to you as well, brother. Jonathan is in the building. And you say, City. I think I hit the wrong one. There we go. That's what I want to hit, Jonathan. 
man. David Dice is in the building. Shout out to you, Dave. Shout out to you. Love W. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to you. What up, dude? He said, you know, R. Kelly is saying, <laughs> get, get that nigga in here with me. <laughs> Him and Cuba Good, man. Hey. They coming for Cuba. They coming for Cuba. You know, oh, man, they they locking dudes down, man. Man, dudes, the man, listen, as soon as I saw them kick in Kelly door, I, if I was Cuba, man, I'm on the next flight out. I'm on the next, I don't know. See, you know what I love about being a passport bro, blue book gentleman, expat? We know now ain't nothing wrong with going to another country. See, we ain't got no pride like you left the United States. Oh, yes, I did. We ain't got no problem with that. Average U.S. citizens will sit up there and take the whole bit. Please. Shout out to my man, Master Martin, in the building. Peace, Andre. Keep, he said, Jersey in the building. I'm the Jersey boys. Shout out to the boys out in the East, out there. And Tyrone in the building. We got Deuce also. What's up? <laughs> I am going to get started. Shout out to my man Black Empowerment and my man Grab and Hall Transport. He said, "What's the name of that one? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? Let me know what you mean, uh, Grab and Hall." Shout out to my man Travis being here as well. Thanks for the portable router information. Yes, guys, I'm telling you, that's what I'm using right now. Just in case you guys are wondering. I am using this, not not the Wi-Fi. Like I said, the Wi-Fi in our building went out. I guess in our area went out. And since it's the holiday week, nobody's going to come work on Wi-Fi or your router until Monday or Tuesday. But we're one of the few people that had enough sense to have a portable router. And since we have a portable router, which is... We have the black one that you guys always see, but we also have the white portable router. So since we have this, we've got Wi-Fi that nobody else has. All we do is just, this one connects by, by a Bluetooth to, to our phones. So as long as I got eSIM, uh, uh, use my eSIM uh, 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 data, this connects, this is an eSIM router. As long as it connects to my phone by way of Bluetooth, this connects to 20 different electronic devices. And it's only $119 on Amazon. Yeah, I'm going to drop the link for you guys later. Look how clear your boy looking with that one little router. Shout out to my man, them Gary boys. <laughs> yes, right. That's right. Gary from West Lafayette. Shout out to you, brother. Man, I remember West Lafayette, too. Okay, let's get ready to get started, guys. With the, with the, I'll, I'll come back to the shout outs. And let me hit the, make sure I hit the rest of the super chats. Make sure you give you guys some good shout outs. Shout out to my man, Will. He said, he said, oh, them, uh, them L Rookians. I was locked down with them dudes to cool dudes. You know what's so funny, man? When you see them, when you're not in, 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 in prison, and you aren't a part of the BS stereotypes that you hear about in prison, such as the gambling or people on drugs or people getting shanked or uh, <clears throat> or people messing with them boys, them ditties. What we call them boys is like guys that mess with uh, other men. I Means that's what we say in the feds. We say, man, y'all like them boys. Like I like like certain cities we knew like boys. <sighs> Broke my heart too. In the feds, we found that. DC, y'all love some boys. Y'all motherfuckers love some boys. I mean, remember what like I said, boys mean them uh messing with other men. Atlanta. That's a given. LA San Francisco. I didn't just say San Francisco. And the other city that just hurt Detroit. 
Yeah, boy, them Detroit boys love them some boys, man. You like, man, y'all messing with them boys like that, like that. And y'all know that, see, y'all, well, how do you know, Andre? You was just in one federal prison. Au contraire, my friend. We got 155 people in here to go hear this truth. Click that like button. In the federal prison, you are allowed to transfer from prison camp to prison camp or, or compound to compound, in other words, or prison to prison because they're across the country, right? When I was locked down, you could transfer every six months. Now the rule is every 16 months to two years. Now they didn't have to approve your transfer, but you could just go to your, your case manager and say, listen, I want to put in for a transfer. I want to be closer to, because they'll convict you. For example, they'll convict you in Chicago. You're originally from Indianapolis. There is no federal spots in Indianapolis, but the prison camp is right in Terre Haute, Indiana. Shout out to Terre Haute, right? That's where, uh, uh, right outside of where uh, IU, Indiana uh, uh, University, University of Indiana is right in that area, right? So there's a prison camp, but you're not on camp level. You still are behind, we call it behind the fences. So you're in the prison prison. They only put you in the camps where there's no fences like in your last year or two, right? So you try to transfer around. So you might get trans, they may, you may get convicted in Chicago, MCC Chicago, but they'll transfer you to El Reno, Oklahoma. Or MCC, uh, the MCCs uh, or, or prisons that's in California. So now you're like, I'm all right in California, can't see my family, can't see my boo. No, I'm boo getting smashed. And so you work your way back to, to your side of the country. And it takes some dudes two or three transfers, right? Me, I didn't even tell my family how much I got locked down for, man. <laughs> my mom was like, well, how long are you in there, baby? I said, mom, I'm in here for a while. I said, no, I'm not in here for life. I said, but I'm in here long enough where it feels like life, okay? And the, you ain't tell your mama your number, man. I don't want to have my mama worried about my, my, my time, man. I'm trying to focus on this bit. I ain't trying to focus on this. See, me, I was, you You guys see how I am right now about the United States. Cut that umbilical cord. I live my life in the country that I'm living in. I don't worry about what's going on back in the States. I was like that in the feds. When I got locked down, I'm focusing on what's going on in this prison life. I can't be babysitting and worry about what's going on the street. What's the latest song? What's the latest shoes? Oh, Kobe, this uh, is, is is it this person, that person in sports? Uh, I missed all of Barry Sanders, all of Barry. I got to watch Barry on highlights. I missed all that. So, I mean, I'm, I could watch it on. I was watching a few games here and there, but you know, if the, if the guys want to watch boxing that day, I can watch Detroit Lions as bad as we were. Hey, I want to watch the Detroit Lions on TV. Man, as bad as your team is other than Barry Sanders. So I can regulate the TV. We watch the telenovelas back then, though. That's how I got hooked on Latin television. Well, okay, let me go back. So I was able to transfer to break my 10 years up every six months. So I'm going from prison to prison in other words state this in other words being the passport bro why i'm in the feds you caught that that's why i know how it works all over the country that's why i knew so many famous people or people that were not infamous but extremely rich that's how come i knew so many sports figures and and man, one of my closest dudes man this dude was an old white dude man he had to be like like i'm 20 I'm 24. He had to be like 51, 52. Like I'm calling 51, 52 old now, right? But back then I was old. And he was in for three years on something that he did with real estate. Like he was flipping houses or something happened with the feds and taxes and so forth. And he was worth like 75 mil. Gave the feds 50 mil he's still sitting on 20 mil when he get out. And that happens a lot in the feds. They'll take a chunk of your money, but but they'll let you, and they don't tell y'all that. So they don't tell you regular dudes that. 
like the regular men, because they'll know y'all get mad. Yes, we let so and so keep twenty million. Why did you do that? He laundered our money. He took our pension fund. Yeah, but he still gave us fifty million. <laughs> And that's how the feds work. So that's why I know so much because I was transferring to so many spots and I was cool with everybody racially. So I wasn't that dude that was on lockdown that only hung out with the gang dudes because I was cool with them because I was a school teacher. So everywhere I went, I was the teacher. So everybody was cool with me. I, was, I wasn't just cool with the mafia dudes. I wasn't just cool with the church dude, with the Nation of Islam dude, with the Sunni Muslims. Shout out to the Sunni Muslim brothers. More science brothers. Shout out to the Nation of Islam, brothers. Five percenters. So I'm down there with everybody, right? Christian brothers. They even had TPs in some of them for uh, the one, the guys that had like a, a, a kind of like Native Americans. They had they had to respect their religion as well. They even had to respect the Satanists. They had to have a special place of worship for those who were Satanists in the feds. You could not discriminate in the federal prison or you, they could get sued. So they had to have a special place of prayer, even for people that believed in Satan and want to worship Satan. They had to have a special place of worship for them. But yeah, man, <laughs> I'm t I'm t boy, I was trying to say this story for Kings and Dreams, but Puffy pull it out. I was going to do this story on Kings and Dreams, man. But it's a lot of the story I still hadn't told, like how I got like that. But I, uh, hey, believe you me, when they was kicking in Puffy door, I was having flashbacks like a mug. <laughs> I was like, Puffy, I know the feeling, baby. When they put their footprint on your door, baby, <sighs> you going to jail. Shout out to my brother in the building with the five dollars. He said, he said, you had me rolling with the Shaka Khan train story. Can you make a, make a jersey drop? Uh, you know what? I've been thinking about making two. I need a new. I need to make a New York and a Jersey and a Philly drop. I've been trying to think of what drops that I could use. I probably could use for Philly uh, 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 a really good uh, Beanie Siegel or 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 Freeway drop. But I've been trying to think of a really good Jersey drop and uh, or just East Coast drop. Just just represent that whole East Coast area. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that that blew me away, man. We sitting up there playing dominoes. We, I mean, playing spades, and we winning too. And we just talked about women and something, something. And uh, he just put and he, his brother looked just like him. Jesse Jackson brother looked just like him. And man, and I forgot what he was like down there for. Like I said, we in MCC Chicago, and MCC Chicago is downtown. You can look it up. It's one of the tallest buildings downtown. It's not as tall as, as the Sears Tower, but it's one of the tallest buildings. But most people don't realize that's a prison. <laughs> they just think it's like, oh, that's a regular office building. It's a big black office building. No, no, that's a federal, that is a federal prison, people. But they just don't know it. And you go to MCCs for, uh, and I forgot what MCC stands for, uh, uh, correctional, I don't, I forget what MCC stands for. But you go to MCCs like when, you, when you're still going to court, back and forth to court. So while you're still going back and forth to court, you go to MCCs, then you get, get convicted. And then once they find out how much time you're going to get, then they ship you to a prison. My first time flying on a plane, club fed. Kid y'all know. <laughs> See, y'all hearing the good stories. First time flying, flying on a plane, I'm 20, 23. I ain't even hit 24 yet. And... Most of the time, I'm, you know, most of the stuff I'm doing illegally, I'm back, back in the day, you could do a Greyhound. So I'm not looking for a flight. Man, they you, they lock you down with a black box. This was, this, this was the black, now just imagine this is a, a box. My cell phone, this would be even a better representation. So they would take the black box and they would, they, they had circles on, on each end of the black box and they would just take your wrists and let me see if I get it right. Make sure I get it just right. And you would be on the plane like this, handcuffed like this. And then the box had a, a handcuff to the bottom to where you got shackles. So now you got shackles like you 12 years a slave 
and you got the black box on. And I kid you not, man, getting on a plane at three o'clock in the morning and nothing but federal agents surrounding that plane. And you're thinking like they're trying to keep somebody from escaping. And then as the years go by of, you know, flying club, club fed, flying club fed, you find out that they're not trying to keep you from escaping. They're trying to keep the person who was snitching, who's walking behind you that you don't know is a snitch from being sniped. Yeah, you getting on a plane with like 200 dudes. You just walking with your little black box. You don't know the last three dudes snitched on some major players. And those major players got dudes in the woods. Ready to exterminate the snitches. And you just walking, being innocent. And so the feds would put, I mean, officers all around that, the, the perimeter of the airplane. All around that airplane. And they wouldn't be facing the, the, the reason how we found out is, you know, talking to the, the guards and everything, you know, because sometimes those guards will be cool. But you notice they, they never faced us. You have a whole plane surrounded by uh, federal officers. Not one of them is facing the plane. All of them facing outward. And so you're like, what the hell are they looking at? And so one guard told us, he was like, what well, this was going on, man. After my fifth flight, <laughs> you know, because like I said, I'm transferring to different spots. I've been down to MC How Atlanta. Atlanta. How come y'all federal prison in the hood Cross the street from the liquor store in the projects. M Look at the MCC in the MCC federal prison in Atlanta is literally in the hood or across the street from the projects. And there's a liquor store right there on the corner. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, you can't get no hood more hood than that. The projects, a liquor store and a federal prison in the heart of Atlanta. And y'all wouldn't know that it was a federal prison sitting right there. Y'all thought that was just a regular building. And that's a whole prison camp with the compound and everything. I think it's an MCC. I think, is a lot of prison in MCC? I think it's an MCC because people transfer in and out of it. Yeah, I think Atlanta's is an MCC. I remember I said MCCs are places that just hold federal prisoners to transfer you to another spot. So you never went from the prison that you were in. For example, I was in Allentown, Pennsylvania, right? Up in the mountains, right? They had just built that prison. You don't you don't transfer to an airplane and then you fly out from, from Pennsylvania. No, it works like this. They 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 take you even by bus to from Allentown, Pennsylvania to an MCC. And from the MCC, whatever the MCC is, whether it be in Jersey, whether it be in uh, other parts of PA, then they fly you out from there. So you never fly out from the prison per se, but you fly out from the MCC, wh where, wherever is close to the MCC. You guys got me talking the life that Diddy's going to live. Diddy's going to have that beige on. They don't wear the orange in, in, uh, in federal prison, except for when you get ready to transfer from one prison to another prison. In federal, you wearing that beige, representing that beige. That's going to be Diddy. Good morning, Andre, and everyone in the chat. Shout out to you, brother, for being here. I'm glad that you made it. He said, I got my ticket uh, to the Black Man. That's what I'm talking about. You guys better get your tickets to the Black Man and Spear Conclave. See you in September, Andre, in Houston from the 6th to the 8th, guys. The tickets, you got about four more days while the tickets are only for a three-day conference of brothers doing some amazing things, sharing some great information in Houston. This September, from the 6th to the 8th, it's only $95. Only not, I'm telling you, if I wasn't part of the conclave, I had already planned on coming down anyway. When I saw uh, all the guys that were speaking last year, I said, oh, man, I'll be there this year. So I'll go go down there anyway. So you already know, guys, we can hang out. He said, remote jobs for the win. Yes, sir. Mailing address, uh, uh, cold soon. Let me know what the was it coming soon. 
Let me know, brother, what the what the CO is. Taylor made dreams in the building. <laughs> Shout out to hey, hey man, me and Andre love Andre and I love that video that you sent us of your look. Man, she is growing. Goodness gracious, your daughter growing fast, man. She is growing. Beautiful, beautiful young lady, too. Love that hair. <laughs> love it, man. I love it. Uh, shout out Taylor Ray Dreams with the $10 uh, super chat. He says, always bring it the truth. Love you, brother. I love you, too, man. Love you, too. Let's get ready to get started. Once again, we're going to do the video regarding this young lady. And I, get, I know I didn't get a chance to do all the shout outs, guys. We got 175 in the building. Click that like button. We like you. Make sure you like us, too, because we already know. Oprah coming next. <laughs> Oprah is coming next. So let's make sure that we click that like button. But right here, and shout out to my man Timothy once again. He said, I don't, he said, I don't think they will they will catch him. Yeah, puff, yeah, puff of smoke for real. Right here is a montage of the sister LGBTQ. Her her YouTube channel is experiencing uh K or Kaya. I think it's Kaya. It's spelled, uh, she spells it with two K's. So experiencing two K's and what is it? Two A's. I think it's two A's at the end, but I put the link, but she's the sister that, that was homeless, went to Japan first, ran out of, ran out of money, only had $50. Somehow was able to make it to Thailand brothers who was out there. The passport bro, shout out to you brothers, gave her money. Now I'll me and Aaron, I'm going to show you the video with me and Aaron for Black Men's Travel have a discussion along with Andrew and you and this one as well, uh, Will of Thrill. But we had a discussion in regards to, do you give money automatically to somebody just because they're Black and just because they're American? We're going we're gonna to have this in this video, but we're going to start off by letting you guys see the moment that she walked back to her her uh, uh, her spot that she was living in in Thailand because she ended up getting a little part-time job. She ended up having a little female girlfriend. She ended up, the people that she got a part-time job with let her stay in an apartment that they had up above their beauty salon. And then you get a chance to see what she did. So let's go from that moment. I was gonna hit up for troubles. Right now I'm back at the shop. Wow, so this is what we come back to today. Now, as you can see, you know, if you ever watched her YouTube or her, her or for videos, you see her skateboard and she's going to be using that skateboard again in a minute. And you see all her stuff is put out. All the stuff that she's walking up on is all her stuff that's been put out is sitting in front of the beauty salon. Remember, I just said her apartment was above the beauty salon that they let her stay she didn't pay rent so they put her out just like if she would get evicted in the states and and now i understand why in the states quite often they have sheriffs present when they put somebody out because you'll see why so she's walking up on her things that's been sitting outside all day this is what we come back to today Chase is it all. Huh? Oh, it's okay. With the Alright, yeah. You got the key, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright. 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 It's locked. It's not locked. Okay, we just want, we just trying to make sure all of our things out of the room. Yeah, it's been a lot going on here, so, so right now we're just going upstairs. But today was smooth selling, I didn't have no problems, no hiccups, no troubles. Right now I'm back at the shop. We just want, we just trying to make sure all of our things out of the room. Yeah, it's been a lot going on here, so. So right now we're just going upstairs to make sure all of our things are out of the room. We're being followed by a man. 
So we just making sure we got all of our things out the room, y'all. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, I want Let's make sure everything is out. Y'all, so this is what's going on. Make sure everything is out. Me. We just want, we just trying to make sure all of our things out of the room. Yeah, it's been a lot going on here. So, so right now we're just going upstairs to make sure all of our things are out of the room. We're being followed by a man. So we just making sure we got all of our things out the room, y'all. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. So they saw their stuff already packed neatly mind you neatly but sitting outside and then when they saw their stuff sitting outside she came in walked past the whole staff walked back upstairs which we're seeing right now and she's just trying to see if anything was left Make sure everything is out. Y'all, so this is what's going on. Make sure everything is out. He got my girlfriend. I see him put it in his pocket. Okay, this is after she went upstairs, checked on everything. Immediately after she and the girl went back downstairs. Now notice on the floor, you don't see any glass yet. You don't see anything broken yet. Notice I use the word yet. I need my phone. I need my phone. I need my phone. He got our phone. He got our phone. I just need my phone, baby. Okay, check. Check, check, check. You need to clean this. Check, check, check. He got our phone. I know. Stop. 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 Stop
The person moved to Japan knowing nothing about the culture. I don't understand why there's so much negativity, especially from my own community. The phone video was becoming unusual. This is how I survived in Thailand with only $7. After living in a small village for almost five months, not making any income, I was running out of money. I was down to my last $50. On January 22nd, I decided to take a risk spending my last $50 on a bus ticket from Chiang Mai to Bangkok, then from Bangkok to Pattaya. That left me with only $7 to my name. I didn't know what to do. I was worried, but I kept my faith and trusted that God would make a way. After making it to Pattaya, I met with a local expat. I told him my story and he decided to book me a hotel and things started to get better at this now she said she came across a local expat let's go back some faith and trusted that god will make a way after making it to patia i met with a local expat i told him shout out to the brother that did what i wouldn't have never done a i don't let nobody walk up on me b just because I'm American don't mean I'm the hookup. And so you guys are going to see what me and, and the other guys had to say about this. Everybody was against Aaron uh, from uh, 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 Black Men's Travel. Shout out to my man Aaron. Make sure you subscribe to his channel. My store and he decided to book me a hotel. And things started to get better at this point. This is what we do. This hey, is what we do. Know, if, Americans if I see another know, black person, if I see another black person, Medellin, where they be a god female, he come up to me, he be like, "Hey, bro, you know, I need a little help getting some." I've done it. I'm like, Dude, right, you know how many dudes you know, have walked up to me when I was in Spain, when I was the UK brothers trying to hustle me? You know how many how many times I've been to the airport and picked up dudes, and another brother will walk up to us to hustle, try to hustle us, or the guys will, when they come to my truck, they say, "Trey, Andre, uh, Americans though, other Americans overseas, Americans, Americans." Oh, that's, different. That's, different. that's what I'm. A lot of times people don't realize, and I know Taylor made dreams can attest to this. A lot of times we don't realize every brother that got a passport ain't your bro. There are some brothers that ain't right. They were grimy and hustlers in the States. And then when they left the States, they brought that same hustlers, try to get a hookup mentality with them to another country, whether it be to DR, whether it be to Colombia, whether it be to Thailand or parts of Africa. It's always brothers that's doing some grimy stuff. So don't think that every brother or every sister that walk up on you is happy to see you. Just like y'all think that certain Colombians look at y'all like a lick, so it is with certain Americans and they live in another country waiting to hustle you. Let's go back to the conversation that we all had with BMT. I'm saying, and one point in time, I almost fell for it until I, until I looked over behind the dude back and it was an American female doing the same hustle to females. Same hustle. And so I sat back, I was like, no, I ain't going for this. So when I sit back and I hear you say, you you want to volunteer funds, bruh, my cash app is a raw. That may seem a donation over, brother. You, 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 right now, you, you, you in that mood of being Mr. Giveaway. I ain't got no problem with that, BMT. Be who you are, brother. Just be who you are. Hold on, Andre. No, 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 no. Don't Andre. change. Be who you are. Oh, Andre. Andre, if you saw that sister in a bus station in Southeast Asia, across Wouldn't the happen. world, somebody that comes Wouldn't from happen. your community. First, you already said why would Your community, bro, a, a black American. You, You're not gonna you help already said why I wouldn't. First of all, it is hard to approach and deal with sisters from the States because you don't know what you're going to get. So I have learned to leave them alone unless <laughs> I meet them in a group of friends that I already know, like when we all were watching the Super Bowl and it just so... Shout out to, B <laughs> Shout out to BMT being in the building. <laughs> hey, the, I, hey, hey, B, I had to clip it, baby. I had to clip it. Hey, I still need that 350 for you, bro. <laughs> I, I, my cash app, you still know what it is, man. I need that 350. If you giving away money like that, hook a brother up. <laughs> happen to be sisters from the states but just in general i don't care if i haven't seen a black american for 40 days and for 40 nights if i see one sister bruh if i see her coming this way i'm turning i'm crossing the street like i'm a little old lady running away from a gang 
Beep, beep. I don't do it. I don't. I'm not about to put myself in that situation where if if this sister cool or is she not cool. I got a couple of notes I've written down here. First of all, oh, we got to come to the reality. First, we got to come to reality. It's real quick. First, we got to come to reality. Not everybody is leaving the United States. Some people are running feet. from the United States. I want you guys to hear that. Not everybody is like us leaving the United States. Some people are running from the United States. There are people that have done dirt to their families and they, they may not have done anything illegal, but they've done enough dirt in their community to their families and to their friends that the best thing for them to do is leave. Whether it be leave the community or whether it be just leave the United States and try to start a new life. And as we were talking and we were having that conversation, that's what I was thinking the situation was with that young lady, that she did some dirt somewhere in the United States and she had to run away from the life that she left. Like I said, it may not be anything illegal, but you don't have to do anything illegal to mess up your life and somebody. That's right. Tell BMT to apologize. If he ain't going to send the money through the cash out, at least can the brethren get an apology. And this is the funny part. No, Dre, she good. She, I would have gave it to her. That's one of our queen, our sisters. All right. That's one of our sisters. And she showed her tail not even, what, a month later? Not even a month after we had this conversation. Showed her ass. Let's get back because this is a good conversation with BMT. Once again, make sure you guys subscribe to BMT and make sure you guys take advantage of getting the authentic, original, not the not the fake ones out there, but the actual black and green logo for the Passport Bros app. You guys got to get that, man. So many guys are networking, doing some amazing things with that app. You can upload your videos. You can upload, if you got a product for sale, you're selling t-shirts, books, you can upload that on there, as well as networking with individuals no matter where you go. So that Black Men's Travel, the the, uh, the, uh, the Passport Bros app, I was about to say Black Men's Travel, but the Passport Bros app, I'm telling you guys, it is a game changer. You want to download that and you can download it for free. You know, some of them charge you for downloading, but this is absolutely free. You can connect with brothers. You ain't got to worry about, uh, you know, being blocked by Facebook or Twitch or Twitter or anything else. You could go ahead and, or TikTok. So make sure you guys subscribe to that or download the uh, the uh, Passport Bros app. Remember, there's a couple of them in there, a couple of fake ones out there. But the one that you're looking for has black and green and white logo. You can't miss it. Shout out to BMT for creating that and his team. Let's get back to the video. <laughs> we don't want to scam. Damn. Some, pe some people, yeah. S number two is there are some of us like me, Andrew, and my other brother up here. We're tired of paying the stupid tax for other people. We are tired of paying the stupid tax. But when some brothers come down, passport pookies, nook nook and ray ray and them, and we end up either being blamed for the stupidity that they did or they need a few dollars from now, now mind you i have nothing against if a brother really down and out a brother a brother if he really down and out you know it is it, fifty dollars bro it is a few dollars to get you something to eat and get your thoughts together and get you something to drink but there are dudes out there kind of like your boy uh what was his name <sighs> what was the name of the dude that got stuck in dr I forgot his name. The one that was at the airport tricked up the little bit of money that he had and then went on YouTube on a live stream begging for money from his subscribers. Come on, man. We get tired of paying the stupid tax for the for the stupidity that other men make. You just you, you just get tired. Of you we as grown men, we maybe as stupid of us. Yeah, Jay Rillo. Thank you, brother. You get pot, you get tired of paying a stupid tax for what another man does. If you know that you're gonna be stupid, keep your tail home. For real. Now, if emergencies happen, we got your back. We ain't saying just leave you stranded. If emergencies happen, emergencies happen. You know, if you get robbed or if you lose everything, or you just made a mistake in the calculations of your money, I got you. I'm with you on that, bro. But man, listen, we ain't gonna keep playing paying other brothers stupid tax. 
He said, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I would have uh, ha I would have had enough brothers here to send me $50. Uh, I'm in the for real. <laughs> for real. Yeah, man. Not everybody can afford to travel and they know it, but they want to see a passport bro video and they want to run out here too. Man, come on now. We bust our butt for our dollars and was wise with our dollars and act like we had some sense just like you did with your dollars. Sure. And that's why you can live the life that you live and all of us that travel as well as in these chats. And we are tired of when brothers and sisters expect us to pay their stupid tax just because I'm a brother. So now you're going to use your color on the guilt. Brother, you ain't going to look out for another one. Hail to the no. I grinded for these dollars just like you grinded for your 3000 to get on that flight. You had 3000 to get on that flight, you should have had another three to take care of yourself. But she don't need it because she got BMTs of the world. Number The next one is, BMT, I need that 350 bro. I need you to go and run that 350 <laughs> real quick because I know you gave it to the sister, so go and give it to the brother. He's gonna give don't, don't act like... We're BMT, come on now. BMT said, hey, man, I ain't listening. I look out for the sister. I'll throw a little 350. 350? You throw that 350 on my books. Hey, BMT. I'm like Diddy. I need that money on my books, baby. I need that money on my books. I need some zoom zooms, some wham whams. See what I'm saying? I'm gonna show you how to make the, the prison Roman noodles, man. See what I'm saying? Prison nachos with the Roman noodles and the cheese, bro. I need to go to commissary, brother. Can a brother get commissary money put on my books? Can I get that 350 BMT? Show me some love. I'm a brother too, bro. Show me some love, BMT. They'll throw that money on my books real quick, man. I'm waiting for, real quick, bro. That 350 on my books. <laughs> she's a woman. Oh, she's a woman because you oh. said that a couple times. Next, next one is I have not seen O'Shea or anybody do any footage of all the homeless brothers that's in Thailand. And I've already watched news headlines of those that are taking place of brothers that are literally homeless in Thailand. And nobody's giving those brothers a dime. Uh, BMT, if you gonna get somebody I, I, that I money, man, get that get that three fifty at least to the homeless right. brothers in Thailand. I have it's a lot of homeless brothers Thailand. living on the beach right now. I've watched the news headlines. You know how I am. I'm a researcher. Last thing, when it comes to content creating, and this is most important, and I, I'm not kidding on this one. For all you guys that want to be YouTubers, it's not as easy as you think to monetize. No. Out of, I just looked it up. I had the article pulled up. This article came out November first. 2023 of all youtubers that are out here trying to make money you know how, what percent it is what's the percentage? point zero two five percent of all we're gonna start right there, 90 right there. million go youtubers back. let me go back I'm kidding on this one for all you guys that want to be youtubers it's not as easy as you think to monetize no. out of i just looked it up i have the article pulled up this article came out November 1st, 2023, of all YouTubers that are out here trying to make money. You know how, what percent it is? What's the percentage? Point. Less than 1%. Less than 1% of us that, I'm talking about YouTubers that drop content daily. Daily. Less than 1% of us are making money. Here, here's the kicker. We're talking about less than a hundred dollars a month. Or I mean, I'm sorry, over a hundred dollars a month. Less than one percent of us are making over a hundred dollars a month. Rest of the content creators, y'all ain't there yet. One of the things, one of the lessons that Ace taught me early, Ace Live, shout out to Ace Live, taught me early. I thought because Ace Live was my friend and my buddy, I was automatically supposed to be able to go on his channel. One of the things that Ace told me a lot of times was, no, you ain't on that level yet. And the second thing he taught me was, my audience is not your audience. A lot of times you think you got a YouTube friend just because they have a audience that that's going to be your audience and ace told me he said no andre you do not want my audience you need to have your own audience and it made me and when he said you wasn't ready for it, i wasn't ready i wasn't ready to 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 uh to reach out to to anton daniels 
at a certain time. And I knew I had to bust my butt to get to that level to, to invite angry mans, the Chantel Simones, the, the Crimson Cures. I had to bust my butt to get to a level. So when they sat back and I said, Could, would you be on, be willing to be on our show and the interview? Oh, Dre, yeah, I know you. I had to bust my butt to, to, for the Obsidians to take me serious. But I thought, and, and I'm, I'm going to say something again. I had to bust my butt for my friend Ace to take me serious. Because a lot of people he tried to help didn't take it serious. So he wanted to see, is Andre just another one, just talking? Or is he trying to use me for my audience to help his audience? Which is not the same audience. And I was not offended at all. All it did was make me bust my, it just, at that time period, it wasn't even about the money. It was about proving to myself. It was about proving to Andrea. It was about proving to other serious content creators that I could be one of y'all too. I'm trying to get individuals on the level of Candace Owens on here. Marquise Brownlee. I'm trying to be a, one of the dudes that could get Mr. Beats for an interview. And on a certain level, you can't do that. But you got to bust your ass to get to that level to where they respect you enough to say, I got to be on that person's show. Actually, I watched their show. So when I sit back and I say it's not, it's not what people think it is in the sense of when these cameras go off and, you know, Andre, my boy, so I'm the hook. No. The, Kings and Dreams could tell you all the times when he'll sit back and say, hey, Dre, I got a topic. Oh, yeah, I'm down with that. Let's do it. Hey, Dre, I got a topic. Oh, no, I ain't with that one. You can go ahead and do that when you're by yourself. I done told Kings, and that's my dude. Many a yeses and many a noes. Why? I learned that from Ace. There's nothing wrong with saying yes to something that's parallel to what you're doing as a content creator, but there's nothing wrong with saying no. I kid you not. That was the best lesson that Ace gave me, man, when he kept saying no, no, no. I'm not coming on your show. No, you, no, no, no. Andre. And we had did videos and everything. Yeah. I kid you not. You, Zoom, Taylor made Dreams. Yeah, well, we all did that for you because we knew what level that you were heading to. And I was on a platform with, with my peers. All of us are guys that's the, 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 the over 30,000 subscribers. So with Zoom, Taylor made dreams. I'm still on what you call. Wait, why you think I'm able to get Dennis Sperling on there? Right after Kevin passed, everybody was trying to get Dennis. I was able to get why all these years of busting my butt. Why you think O'Shea called me? Hey Dre, uh, yeah, I need to talk to you, bro. I need an interview from you, bro. What? Yeah, I see what you're doing out there. I need an interview from you. Three, four years earlier, me and O'Shea was on Taylor Made Dreams panel. Remember, Taylor Made Dreams did like a 16-hour show and had all these YouTubers, and it was just back to back to back to back all day long. But I couldn't ask O'Shea for an interview, and I knew he wouldn't ask me. I wasn't on that level yet. I had to put in the work. Then years later, three years later, O'Shea calls me, hey, Dre, I see what you're doing. Now let's do an interview. That's how it works. There are no shortcuts. There is no hookup. There is no, hey, what's the hookup for you? There is no hookup. When these cameras go off, man, I'm busting my ass for real. So when they say, let's do, I feel so privileged being one of the few brothers that can even sit back and say, you know what? We didn't hit high, high four figures this month. We've hit uh, a mid uh, 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 five figures the next month. It feels good to have these these uh, companies reaching out to us for sponsorship now. Like over the last three or four months, everybody wants us to be a part of a sponsorship now. So now we're trying to decide on which pro why we put the, we put the work in. Why am I saying that? When it comes to this young lady, I'm a YouTuber. Look at me. I got a cell phone and I'm just like y'all. No. No. 
You see how much work Aaron puts in for the Passport Bros app? Aaron just mentioned it the other day. He said, man, we had a six-hour meeting the other day. Just about the app alone. All the, all the years that dudes like Aaron have had to put in. So when Aaron has a live stream for Black Men's Travel, there's a reason why Aaron has two, 300 people per live stream. He put in the work. I'm talking to all you YouTubers out there that are small. Put in the damn work. I'm serious about that. And it's so much easier for you guys now. We didn't have AI. What the hell we did have AI? There were no YouTube shorts to help build your, your, uh, your subscriber account. We didn't have all that. Collaborations weren't really the thing thing among black YouTubers. Now it's just commonplace collaborations. So it's so much more for you to do. But if you ain't going to put in the work, why should I come on your panel? Hell no. You're not putting in the work. But when I see a person putting in the work, man, I support you 100%. No hesitancy at all. Why? Because people, when they saw me putting in the work, they supported me. Just not because of my numbers, but because they saw my work ethic. That's why when I was able to reach out to uh, to set up this interview with Angry Man. Angry Man on his way to a million subscribers. The money that this dude is making, crazy numbers. And I knew there was a place and a time for me to ask Anton, Angry Man, and all these other people that are coming down the turnpike for an interview. And I knew at a certain time we weren't ready. And there's nothing wrong with that, guys. Bust your ass, get to that place. And those who are of the of the upper echelon will notice you. I kid you not, it will amaze you how many people watch you guys' content and will help you blow your channel up if you're willing to put in the work and let them see your work ethic. Shout out to you guys. Let's go back to the video real quick. I want to show you guys something real quick. Zero two five percent of all right here let me move me out of the way because i want to let you guys see this it says over 200 million people consider themselves as creators or content creators it says i forgot i forgot what i can't see the top part up there but it also says in regards to let me scroll down see what it says with youtubers it says that 97 97.5% of youtubers don't make enough money to even reach the poverty line what's the poverty line in the united states $12,500 a year i'll say that again the average youtuber 97.5% of people that are on YouTube right now don't even make $12,500 a year from YouTube. If you're going to be looking at this as far as like being serious with it and be among that two point something percent that can make this into a, a viable business to where you are making four or five figures a month, you got to put in the work. You got to patiently put in the work, just like with any business. Any business, they said, what, it will fail within the first five years, 80% fail in the first five years. Same thing with content creating the YouTube. This April is our fifth year anniversary, April 19th. Well, April 9th, actually. We put in five years of busting your ass. There has not been one day in five years I haven't dropped a video with five channels. Not one single day through sickness and in health. Rain, sleep, no snow. That's how you got to go for it. It's lucrative. Take it from me. It is extremely lucrative. But you got to put it in the work. And I believe that you guys can do it. Let's continue on with the video. Ninety million YouTubers that drop daily content are making money. 
point zero. I didn't say point two. I said point zero two percent. And I looked up several locations to validate that. Most people on YouTube are not making money and they definitely don't make the type of money that you and I and other content create. They will never in their lives see Talk five figures will. a month. They'll never see six figures a month. So to sit back and act like I can do what, what, what BMT does, I can do what Taylor made, I can do what Andrew does. When you guys know when the cameras go off, we are busting our ass to do what we do, whether it be creating right. an app whether it be networking, whether it be creating the next or having two or three channels or being on two or three different platforms. We work hard. So when people sit up there, such as these individuals or Jay Rillo or anybody else, try to make it seem like I can do it. They, it's easy. This is off cameras, guys, in all sincerity. I put in more work as a content creator. Now, I, we reap great benefits, but I put in way more hours as a content creator than I ever had as in corporate America. And I was facts. making 87 a year in corporate America. Facts. That's so facts. when people sit back and try to think that they could take a cell, a cell phone in a couple months, no matter what country they go to, they can be the next Ace Live or the or the next uh, 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 Barber World or, or Flyboy Way. No, it's only zero. It's only 0.05% of us that's making YouTube money. And they, and they said this in the article, even if you're making $1, I'm not talking about ballers. They say of the people that were making one dollar off of YouTube, point zero five two five percent. So we so when we sit up there and we are so adamant and we and then you got certain YouTubers that don't do interviews with people that aren't on a certain level. I ain't mad at them because once you get a certain level, you know that people are taking YouTube serious like BMT at twenty five thousand or or us with what we do. We realize that it's somebody with these cameras off or busting their butt like Andrew, busting their butt like we do. Shout out to my man Will in the building. Now, I know, I know, I know, I know Will got my back. I know Will, you got my back, right, bro? Oh, man, you, you know what? I got to get on you, man. Look. Oh, you come on. Get him, man. Will. Come on. Look, get him, Will. Man. You know, we didn't talk. You look, we didn't talk before. We didn't talk before. And look, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. When he first came on the video, all right? And one of the first things within the five minutes when she was talking about her, fia her fiance and she had just got there, I'm like, well, dang, how long had this chick even yeah, yeah, been that there? Shit that shit threw me off. I, 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 I mean, when she I said that, I want my money back when she said, said that. Again towards the end. <laughs> so I'm like saying, okay, everything ain't always what it seems. Because I'm looking like if she got a family back in the States, you can't tell me one person in your family ain't going to help you. One. Everybody in your family don't like you. Look, bro, I got at least, okay, I, I'm on good terms with my family. Well, even if you ain't on good terms with your family, you got at least one. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. At and least on top one. of it, she could have went to the embassy if she was really having problems and they would have got her back to the States. Okay, as a retired U.S. Army guy, every country I've ever been to, even when I deployed to a combat zone, you don't think I was researching where I was going? Especially if I know bullets gonna be flying, because I'm trying to win the hearts and minds of people. That's how I survived in Iraq. That's why I never got killed, because I had a freaking Iraqi that was on my side that I took out on objective with me, who was my interpreter. So my point is, even when I went to Colombia, and I was telling you about that, all right? I didn't go out there for all that pay for play crap. You know what? I saw what everybody was doing. As a matter of fact, even when I got there and the guy was talking about, oh, well, you know, if you want to have guests, you got to pay extra. Like, bro, I ain't paying no um, guests to come up in here. I mean, no, nah, I'm good. My whole thing is, man, I did that little paper plate crap when I was uh, in my freaking, um, back, matter of fact, I'll give you a perfect example. Back in 1991, before I was getting ready to go to Operation Desert Storm, I learned a valuable lesson. Was it in Frankfurt, Germany? This ain't even Columbia. Frankfurt, Germany. Downtown with my boys. We go out there to the bond hall. We in the red light district. Hey, got there by the train. Okay. Had a couple of drinks. They said I done ran through some chicks all up through the um red light district. Bruh, sat down, had a drink. Don't even know how I got back to the barracks that night. Because you know what? I got drugged. Didn't even know I got drugged. And this was two days before I'm getting ready to go over to a war zone. So I learned my lesson then that I was like, okay, you can't ever do that. Well, my mom told me way back in the day. Don't ever go somewhere and leave your drink under, um, what you say, unattended. 
All right, all right. I want to give a shout out to the CC with the, I think that's the Kenyan shilling, a thousand Kenyan shilling. I really appreciate that. He says she's down bad and still got a sassy attitude. You can't be serious, BMT. I don't think she had an attitude though. I don't think she had an attitude. All right, let, hold on. Let, let me let me bring the black cleaner. Black cleaner got my back. Black cleaner, what's up, uh, man? I, I, I know you. I know you would help her out. I know you would help her out. You know I got your back, man. You've had my oh, back. Man. I got your back. But me, I'm a little bit different. I help people who help themselves. So I mean, yeah, That's she right. out there. She doing hair and stuff like that. I'm definitely going, you know, look out for her also. But mm -hmm. if she just out there, like he said, e begging and begging, oh nah, she gets not a dime from me. Just in case you guys forgot, I just wanted to give you a highlight of what happened with Passport Sisses uh, last year. It ain't even been a whole year. Remember the the one Passport Sisters that destroyed the one nail shop, nail salon? I forget which country it was in, but we're going to watch the footage of that one right now. And don't forget, guys, tonight's topic is 12 countries that will accept Z that Diddy, that Diddy can run to right now is actually 79 countries that have no extradition treaty with the United States. But let's continue to finish off this video real quick. So we're going to be looking right now at the, the other sisters last year that got convicted for tearing up and terrorizing. Thank you, Mbaba. Let's come to give you the money. We left just up. Now look at it. <laughs> That was a playback. So back to the one insane. that we're dealing with now in this Thailand. This is where we're standing, y'all. This is where we're standing. And they decided to put the lock on the door. And when I tell y'all, y'all, when I tell y'all, it was by the grace of God for us to be home. You know why? Because if we wasn't, we was going to be locked out. We was going to be locked out even though I'm paying rent at this place. And these people are not Thai. The owners... She's tied, but her husband, her boyfriend, who's causing all these problems, he is not tied. He is somebody that wants to be in control of me and of my girl. He doing anything and everything in his power to try to bring us down. But we're just going to keep on praying and keep on using the word of God against I'll him. Keep on and just keep on letting God fight our battles. But I, I really don't know, y'all. All this, right, we're looking at is a couple days before the incident occurred. Once we returned downstairs, after checking to make sure we had all of our things, the owner boyfriend approached me with the intention to break my camera. We decided to go to the police and make a report of the assault. So after she tore everything up, she went to the police station. It's really hard to explain. It's the loudest person who wins. The loudest person who wins. The, the guy who punches. It's not, but it's not. It's not actually strong. I would, I would say it's more like a self-defense mechanism. Strong shit. Yeah. Even within my position, I don't want to change my mind. I don't accept the truth. Well, you she blame the ladies. <laughs> We were assaulted by six individuals. 
I was kicked in my head multiple times, and my fiancé was hit with a chair, and we ending up with a fine of 120000 for damage to property. Because he'll, he'll be waiting for you at 1. He's probably going to call you if you don't come by 1. So it's kind of like an official time, okay? So how much is, let me move me myself out of the way, how much is 120000 baht that they owe for destroying that property? That is 3200 almost $3,300 that she has to pay. Now, mind you, we're talking about a sister that's homeless. Now she got a homeless girlfriend with her. And now they're in another country and they own, they owe for damages $3,300. These are y'all sisters. Hey, hey, BMT, come on now. She need that, that money player. Go ahead and hook her up. Go and send her that 3300 You good? There is no way in the world. That's why you see me, and I'm not biased, but I'm biased. I think, I think maybe a couple of older sisters that I've met were really cool. But really, anybody under 40 <laughs> that's coming from the States, yeah, I don't deal with them sisters, man. Like older sisters is kind of like laid back, kind of cool that I've met. Cool sisters. But them older, but those younger ones under 40, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> Come on, BMT. You got to take the L for that one. I told you she was trouble. I told you that. I bet you back in the States, she was causing some mess. And that's why she left abruptly. And now she showed her tail here in Thailand. Just making brothers and sisters look bad. Look bad. <laughs> Don't send her the money. Go on, send her that money, BMT. Go ahead. It's a, it's a woman, BMT. It's a woman. Hook her up. Shout out to my man, BMT. Make sure you guys subscribe to his channel. Let's get her get started with the Diddy. Let's get started with the Diddy. Let me pull up these countries for us, man. Here we go. I got some video, but I'm, I got video of those who are already being a part of the, the accusations. But before we do that, let's look at these countries. Let me screen share with you guys. Let me go back here. Here we go. Right here, these are uh, did uh, did he uh, Need, he needs to go to Somalia. <laughs> There's a, a a large list. Let me move me out of the way. Oh, I'm going to come to the super chats in a minute. The first countries that do not extradite. Now these are the ones that start off with they don't extradite their citizens, and usually they don't extradite anybody else. Brazil, Portugal, Venezuela, Russia, Germany china and france and they have like like there have been famous people that are still in france right now and one of them was the, the i forgot the, the the one dude that was a music producer or movie mogul back in the 70s and they were accusing him for mess about messing with kids or little girls and he went straight to france and he ain't been back yet and they ain't never locked him up I forget his name. Very famous person too, and I forget his name from the, from the seventies and eighties. But there are a bunch of other countries, such as that these countries don't ex, ex you know extradite anybody. Ecuador, he could go to Cuba, Nicaragua, a hey, Iceland, Switzerland. If he wanted to, he can go to Iraq, Lebanon, Libya. I don't think he would want to go to North Korea. 
Somalia, yes, it is right there. Syria, those are the countries that he could go to. Also, he could hit up if he wanted to Afghanistan, Algeria, so he could make his way all the way down to A's and B's. But there's a whole list. If, if I was Diddy, I would be looking at this right now. This is what I'd be doing. What countries can send me back to the state? Yes, no, no, no. They won't send me back. No, no. Argentina will send your butt back. Yes, they will. Australia, they will send your butt back. Yes, they will. Austria, they will send you back. But Angolia, they won't send you back. And there's a whole another list of all the countries once again. So Diddy has a lot of countries to choose from. Now, me personally, I won't lie. Indonesia would have probably been my spot too. You in Bali for the rest of your life? No, that's not a bad choice. Living that, that beach life, it's not expensive. Oh, man, with the money that he got. I don't think I could be in Ecuadorian Ecuadorial Guinea. Ecuadorial Guinea is the um, for those that don't know, it is a small country in Africa. It is the only Spanish speaking country in Africa. Just in case you guys are wondering what country is that? That's the only Spanish speaking country in Africa. So there's a lot of countries to choose from. You could have chose Dubai, Morocco. Could have chose Mongolia. You got a lot of countries. Like I said, leave North Korea alone, man. Don't, don't even consider it, bro. Uh, I don't think you want to go to Palestine either. But I'm going to tell you something for real. My number two choice, I, my number two choice would have been China. What? Yeah. You want to go to a country that's just as developed as the United States and has more English speakers than the United States. I said again, you can look that one up. You can look that one up. China has let's go, that, that busts a lot of people upside the head. China has more English speakers than the United States. Yeah, our little measly 400 million among a couple billion. Yeah. Yeah. So you better head to Africa. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to this list real quick. I don't want to hold you guys. I know it's going to be a late night for you, some of you guys. Rwanda. So he's going to Africa. He's going to Rwanda. I heard Rwanda's looking a little bit better. This is really developed. So I'm here Rwanda is starting to come around. If you want to live that beach life, St. Martin. But I don't think he want to be stuck on the island for the rest of your life. Just one island. That's the size of DR. You know, Dominican Republic is the, is the largest island in the Caribbean. Uh, yeah, you ain't trying to do Ukraine right about now, did he? He could do Taiwan. Syria. Oh, he goes straight to the Vatican. Holla at the Pope. He goes straight to the Vatican. Let's not even waste no time. I got to talk to the Pope. Did he go walk up in there talking to the Pope? Vietnam. West Sahara. Who want to be in the Sahara? Woo. Yeah, I don't think so. So there are over 86 countries that Diddy can go to without worrying about being sent back to the United States, including Ethiopia. These countries have no extradition treaty with the United States. None. Not no, no treaty, not one bit of a treaty, but there are some that do have uh, treaties. Yes. Albania. Yes. So that's what Diddy is looking at. And before we go, we'll just take a few sec a few minutes out and watch the latest headline of what's taking place with Diddy anyway.
let's go back to the video. Let's see what's going on with my man Diddy. Homes in Miami and Los Angeles were raided by Homeland Security. According to former prosecutor to Melba Pearson, they're likely looking for some specific evidence. The feds are doing raids at three different homes of P. Diddy, including his homes in California, in Florida, and in New York. And what I think they're looking for are videos. So basically, P. Diddy had a habit, allegedly based on told to us through the filings by uh, Cassie Ventura. They have all said that he had a habit of liking to video either him abusing other people or in, you know forcing other people to abuse each other for his. Okay, before they go further into that, they're absolutely correct when it comes to photo or video. Dude, they they almost, when the feds kicked in the door on us, they almost basically ignored us in the sense of they wanted photos, 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 and videos because they were trying to find as many co-conspirators or future co-conspirators as possible. Remember what I said? They already got evidence of Diddy. Let's say for six or seven indictments, they probably got evidence for maybe three to convict him. So that's a given. They're trying to get at least enough evidence for five. So they got enough for one or two or even three, but they're trying to get enough evidence for five. At the same time, they're trying to get photos and videos of people that will snitch on Diddy. So if they catch so-and-so on video, hey, we caught you on video doing booty, do booty stuff with, with Diddy. No, I got a wife and kids and I'm famous. We need you to go go to court and snitch. That's why they do the video footage. To either find co-conspirators or find snitches. Man, they dude, the feds are so bad. Do you know how many dudes that took a plea bargain because the feds said, we're going to lock your mama up and make her snitch on you? We're going to give your mama 10 years. Then, then you buy your mama a car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that car is in your mama's name. Your mama work at the post office. She can't afford a Ferrari. So we're going to get your mama on tax evasion or racketeering. Your mama looking at, your girlfriend looking at. Your, remember with Steve Harvey, a wife? In the, I mean, Steve Harvey's a wife, Marjorie? The first drug dealer, what did, he, what did he do? He took the whole case, so who don't go to jail? Marjorie and the kids. Now, the kids weren't going to jail, but Marjorie would have been separated from the kids. So he was like, you know what? I'll take the whole bit. Because he knew Marjorie was going to get locked down, locked down. So he said, if y'all don't lock her down, I'll take the... Feds do that all the time. They come in and they look for, for family members that they could throw a case on. And once they know they could throw a case on a family member, they know you're going to fold. So that's why they come in the house for Diddy. That's why they, they were cuffing the kids on camera. Because they want to let him know. We already got indictments out on your kids. Because his son, I think when the oldest boy, is already on one of the indictments. And so to keep your son from getting locked up, what they'll say, say to Diddy, listen, give us 15, give us 200 mil. Your son won't get locked down. You, you'll do this 15. You'll walk away doing with the feds, do like 12 and a half. There is no good behavior with the feds. You'll do 12 and a half, 13. And then you can go on back out and, and, and live your, the rest of your life. I think Diddy, what, 54? Man, D man, Diddy need to, my boy, Diddy need to run. 54? Did the feds give him 13, 420? Man, you in your 70s when you get out, no matter how much money you got. Late 70s. Oh, man, I'm out. I'm out, Diddy. Hey, if you need for me to send you, Diddy, if you need for me to send you that chart, 
of all the countries that does no extradition, you need to have your, hey, Diddy, that same street team that you use, that them same people that made you famous with your social media outlet, you need to have somebody, who, dude, get you some chat GBT in your life. Chat GBT. You need to explain everything that's going on to chat, chat GBT. Chat GBT, as my advisor and my personal co-conspirator, I need for you to tell me the top 12 countries that I can escape to and I have my own jet and I need to be there today. Ch and chat GBT will be telling Diddy and tell him all the countries that he need to go to. You need to do something at 54? Man, you can't do five years at 54. You coming out at 61 years old. If he get 10 years, he get 10, he do like eight and a half. Oh, man. No, Diddy, no. Salute, Andre. Uh, three cases of black men acting uh, a fool in, du in Dubai. Oh, in Dubai, Indonesia, and Thailand are good case studies for a culture clinician uh, to assess their thinking error. Wow. I got to look that up. Shout out to Gregory. And yeah, they do need the culture clinician help. Shout out to culture. Make sure you guys subscribe to closer culture clinician channel. Good brother. He said they could still put a price on his head and some mercenaries, uh, uh bounty hunters might try to drag him back. Th th those type of cases have happened, but I know individuals like the one guy that just died that had all that if evidence on, uh, he was in France, man. And I watched his interview like twice. And he had information on secret services and all type of stuff on the federal government. And he was he was the one that came out and was like, hey, your cell phone is still on even when it's off. And they're recording you. I forgot the dude name, man. Wore glasses, skinny white dude, man. And he fled to France. And the federal government wanted him bad. And he doing interviews and making money. And he was a college professor here, but he was still making money with books and everything else in, in the other country in France while he was in France. So, and he was talking about Biden and Obama and everybody in his writings, like everybody was doing dirt. And they never brought him back. He just recently passed on. So, it depends on how bad they want you. Shout out to my man Drew World in the building. Let me get, get to these uh, super chats. Let's go back to the to the video, actually, and then we're going to go back to the super chats. It's pleasure, and I would record all of that. So I think those are some of the things that no, he wasn't the feds are looking for. I think they're looking for other types of evidence to corroborate the statements yep. that were made by yep. Little Rod, by Cassie Ventura, and the other people have come forward saying that he did abuse them. So they're looking for corroborating evidence. And the basically the building the blocks to put together what mean? will end up being a massive, massive, massive criminal case. So oh, far, Diddy hasn't been arrested, but he has already faced his fair share of legal issues. Last year, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, who you probably know as singer Cassie, accused him of sex trafficking and sexual slavery. She alleged that Diddy raped her and beat her so severely that she was bruised. Cassie also alleged Diddy made her have sex with prostitutes and recorded it on video. She also says he forced her to carry a gun. Cassie sued him under New York's Adult Survivors Act and settled with Diddy outside of court just one day after the suit was filed. Joy Dickerson Neal also filed suit against Diddy under the Adult Survivors Act, accusing him of drugging and sexually assaulting her back in 1991 when she was a college student at Syracuse University. Diddy See, yeah. Yeah, those laws, each state is different. Now you, oh, okay, here we go. Now you guys see when you hear me say, the three L's of, of the passport bro movement. Now, I'm not saying because of Diddy, but I'm just saying there are three L's of why dudes become passport bros, expats, blue book gentlemen. First L is lifestyle. You want a new life. 
whether it be new country, whether it be new foods, whether it be new medical, whether it be different water, whether it be just a new life experience. You want peace, a lifestyle, whether it be cost of living being different, a new lifestyle. You're just tired of the stressful lifestyle that you had in the States. It's just driving you crazy. Work, gym, home. Work, gym, home. Work, gym. Oh, I got some coochie. Work, gym, home. And you just get tired of the same rat race. You're tired of trying to keep up with the Joneses. Oh, they got the new LeBrons out. Oh, they got the Kobe, the Kobe uh, remix coming back of the Kobe shoes when he was with Reebok. I mean, when he was w w wearing uh, 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 Irisons. It's just, it's just so much of trying to keep up with the Joneses economically. I just read an article today that 61% of all Americans will be broke when it comes to their savings by the end of the year. They said that the, another article I read that this past year was a record breaking year, not doing COVID. Now, a record breaking year for people going into their, their 401k and taking hardship money out. Americans, y'all talk good, but we broke. Oh, there's a few of us that's making, you know, we're making decent money. But as far as like a country, country, Oh, no, nah. it don't matter what color you are now. Nah. Now, nah, don't mind. Black people are broken than everybody else. But for the most part, Americans are suffering because you're not getting a raise or anything else. But inflation keeps going up. And so it is once again. When you when you find yourself in a situation where you're like, I don't know what to do. The first one is lifestyle change. Number two is the ladies. Of course, you want fit, feminine, friendly. You want everything that Kevin Samuels was talking about. And then some, the ladies, nothing wrong with moving to another country and enjoying the ladies in those new locations. But number three, just as important, the laws. The laws. Now, like I said, not in, not like in Diddy case, but some of the marriage laws in the United States, ain't no way in hell I'm getting married in the States. Ain't no way, no, never, divorce laws, oh no. From state to state is bad. So so when you hear YouTubers say, so you telling me that you can find a good woman and a lady in, in, in all 50 states. You can go to another state. I couldn't find good laws in 50 states. You can find you a good lady, but you cannot tell me that you can find some safe, decent divorce laws if it don't work out in the United States, all 50 of them. The laws, that's what's hurting y'all. Child support, laws. Alimony, laws. Dudes leave the United States to go to other countries where they ain't got to deal with them crazy if they do decide to get married in another country. The crazy laws. So remember first, lifestyle. Second, ladies. Third, laws. This is the reason why dudes become expats, passport bros, blue book gentlemen. And I'll say that on any panel, which I don't like to go on everybody's panel anyway. Let's go back to, to uh, the video, guys. He was slammed with yet another lawsuit last month, this time brought on by music producer Rodney Jones, also known as Lil Rod. The 73-page lawsuit lays out dozens of allegations against Diddy, including that he forced Lil Rod to hire prostitutes and have sex with them. The court doc also claims Diddy himself assaulted Lil Rod. But that's not the only bombshell allegations revealed in the detailed documents. Lil Rod doesn't shy away from publicly naming other celebrities he says assaulted him. I don't know that Cooper Gooding Jr. is going to escape from that one. Let's start with the allegations against Academy Award winning actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Lil Rod alleges Diddy was, quote, grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. when they were on Mr. Combs's yacht. There's actually photos of their interaction together too, which are laid out in those court documents. In the first pic, you see Diddy and Cuba talking with Diddy's arms on Cuba's. In the next pic, Cuba has his arm around Lil Rod and is smirking. Court docs go on to state, quote, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. He rejected his advances and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. In the last couple of years, there were allegations against 
Now, remember what I said. How does the work in the feds? How does the fed get their convictions? They get their convictions by bringing others into the conspiracy who will fold. That's how you how the feds do. And it could be somebody that is part of the conspiracy. Or like I said, like in my case, in the case of some of the African brothers that were snitching on dudes that they never even met. It doesn't matter. As long as they can get somebody that can snitch, that's why they're coming in for the films. Yeah, they're trying to make sure they build a case against Diddy, but the best case against Diddy will be building cases against other people. I bet you any other entertainer that's that's brought up in this will snitch on Diddy on that stand. Promise you that one. And since they will tell Diddy, this is what will happen. This is exactly how the feds work. They will tell you that they got several snitches. And they ain't lying. And so they'll say, hey, Diddy, listen. Come on, man. You know and we know. You take this to court. We got snitches. And we're going to put your son in jail. He's already on the, on, on the, the ink has already been dried on his name. If you take it to court. Now, go on and take this knife. But if you take... You know, we, we set it up to where we got seven indictments against you. you. You take these, take these top three. You go ahead and look at 20. Or you look at 15. Go ahead, give us 200 million. And go and start doing that time. That's exactly how it works. That's from the richest dude to the poorest dude. That's exactly how it works. They don't care anything about the evidence as much as they got as long. In my case, y'all ready? Here we go. The artillery is sitting right there. I recognize the artillery, all of it. I'm like, oh, shit. I know each piece of artillery carries 15 years mandatory minimum in the feds a piece remember I told y'all I was looking at 163 years 165 years we were one of the few people that took it to court we sitting there in court looking at everything 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 the only thing that saved us from the artillery that we recognized but the snitch didn't. So the snitch sat back. The only thing that he told that was true. I never saw any of those before. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got this from the location. Well, I don't know who y'all got it from, but uh, I've never seen those before. But you said that they said that. Yeah, they said that they had something, but I never saw it. They said they were strapped, but I never saw. That's the only reason your boy is out right now. Only reason I got that 10 piece instead of getting that 15 a piece for each piece of artillery because the snitch never saw. Feds use people to become snitches. Evidence is cool, great, but people can use attorneys and wiggle through evidence. And all you got to do is see with evidence, as long as you can get the jury if they're taking you to jury trial instead of one judge, if you can get them to have a doubt, you got a chance. But with a snitch, there is no doubt. The snitch was right there, supposedly. That's what they're building against Diddy. That's what they're building. So all you do is just sit back thinking of kicking in doors, taking evidence. That, uh, man, they don't do the last person that they focusing on putting on lockdown is Diddy. They're trying to lock down the snitches in the evidence. Hear me out. You guys are going to see this in the next year unfolding because it's going to take a minute for this to unfold. Our case was a year. Can you imagine how long Diddy's case is going to be? So within the next year, you're going to start seeing all these entertainers come out. But watch how many entertainers, when they go to court, are going to be on that stand. 
watch how many famous people are going to be on that stand because they are not about to sit up there and say, wait a minute, I'm a, uh, Cuba Gooden is not about to do 15 years for Diddy. That ain't going to happen. Anybody else is not going to do 10, 15 years for Diddy. That's not going to happen. I promise you that. So at the end of the day, that's literally how it works. I know what lead attorney is going to say, and I know what all these other people are going to say, but if you ain't never been locked down in the feds, and you ain't never seen that ink dry with your name, you don't know as much as we know. And I support lead in all the other legal shows, but I'm telling you, bruh, <laughs> I'm telling you, when, when, when it's happening to you, all the knowledge man i do all this i'm i'm sharing with y'all as if it happened yesterday federal number zero three zero eight one zero two seven zero two seven means that the state in which you were locked up in or got captured in which is indiana anybody that got a federal number could tell you that your last three numbers is the state federal number of where you got convicted and they told me when i was young there's going to be a number given to you like a slave that you will never forget in your life zero three zero eight one zero two seven i used to have my fed id for about a good 10 years after i got out and one day i just sat back and i set it on fire because i'm a new andre Federal IDs are red. It looks like a regular ID, like high school ID. You got to keep it on, got to keep it clipped on, and it's red. And I set my, finally set mine on fire because that person who I was no longer exists. But when it comes to Diddy and them, that's why they're doing what they're doing with this evidence. And they're going to be back at that house and back at that house getting as much as possible. And now they gather evidence. This is the funny part. They're gathering evidence against everybody else in Diddy's house. Footage, photo, dude. You know, the, the computer, anything that's got on the computers, any of that, any footage, any names. You think Diddy gonna be the only one? Man, Cat Williams ain't never lie. They all going down this year. They all going down. It's crazy, dude, how, they, how the feds work. Man, they, dude, feds don't care nothing about nothing except evidence and snitch. Man, they will let you run. They will let Diddy run from country to country to country, state to state. Man, they'll let Diddy do a concert tour. They don't care. Once they got everything they need, they come knocking on the door. Come on, Sean. What? What my ass? Come on, let's go. That's how the feds work. They build their case and build it and build it and build it. And if it take them four, five, six years, they will build. Dude, 10 years. Dude, I know so many dudes that's so pissed because they, they, they're like this. Man, I know so many dudes on lockdown, man, that's still locked down. Because they're so pissed that the government never came after them when they were doing crimes. Some of you brothers were just like me. You just never got caught up in whatever you were doing when you were young. Just imagine if right now the feds came and knocked on your door right now. It told you about something that you did when you were 19 or 21 or 23 or 24. That's how the Fed works. That's, dude, I know dudes that did their crime when they were 21, and all of a sudden they 32 with families in the church, pastors. Yeah, when you were 21, like, what the, when I was 21? That's how the Feds work, man. If it takes them years to build a case, they do not give a care. They don't care. Why do they do that? Because they need 
those bodies for the prison, the prison industrial complex. Remember, I told you guys about Unicor. Let's go to go go to Unicor. Remember, I told you about the 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 prison company called Unicor that they have all these prisoners because once you become a prisoner, you're free labor. Once you become a prisoner, you're free labor. And a lot of people don't know that $1 billion Let's see if this is, is the website. No, that's not the one. But I worked for Unicor, and anybody mainly that's that was in prison works for Unicor. The federal prison industry, Unicor. They don't care nothing about, yep, slave farms. They care less. Dude, I'm telling you, they care nothing about solving crime and keeping the streets safe. This is what it's all about right here. Remember I told y'all that beige that we wear in federal prison? That beige. I used to wear that beige. It's nothing but about labor. All the products that they produce. Let's just look at some of the products. Everything from hats to gloves, all the stuff and stuff that y'all wear when you're working. Towels, sheets, all that stuff. And this is not just for prison. Realize the stuff that they make are also for the military. They have a whole store, general store of stuff that prisoners make. Stuff for warehouses. Electrical components, eyewear, all the stuff that y'all be wearing on the job, in the in the foul, yeah, all that stuff made in prisons. Yeah, your office chairs, yeah, office furniture, oh yeah. A lot of the vehicles, heavy equipment, yeah. Yeah, your little emblems and logos, yeah, 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 yeah. All that stuff. U.S. Air Force products, U.S. Marshall products, products for the prisons itself, other products over here from food services. Let's see what they make. What food services? Yeah. The agriculture business, your foods. Oh, y'all didn't think Unicor Federal Prisons had anything to do with your animals? That you eat your beef, your milk? Oh, you didn't think we... Man... Where do you think your tilapia comes from in a grocery store many times? Either overseas or it comes from a prison farms where your tilapia in the grocery store is. Oh, y'all didn't know that, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, it's on the New York Stock Exchange. Look up Unicor. Unicor is on the New York Stock Exchange, man. It's been there for a while. This is what they remember. This is right around the time they started privatizing prisons. Your dairy, look at all that non fat, 2% milk, chocolate milk. Look at that. Look at all your products celeries, lima beans, broccoli. Yes, your federal prisons provide all that for you. Yes, they do. See what other products they have. They got electronics, eyewear, bath and hygiene. I knew we already made mattresses. I knew that. Yeah, they make mattresses in federal prisons. Hospitality. Some of your favorite, some of your favorite uh, hotels got mattresses. Some of y'all recognize some of these mattresses too. They came from federal prisons.
Medical care? Let's see what medical care is. Oh, medical mattresses. For hospitals. All that made by prisoners. Let's see what uh, the electronics they have. Oh, I remember those. I remember those circuits components. Yep. There we go. That was me right there. Yep. I remember that. Yep. (laughs) Tearing down and building up computers. Kid you not, man. If you guys ever wonder where your old computers are, I'm about to go go to the Super Chats now. Thank you, brother, for, for reminding me. If you guys ever wonder where you throw out a computer or something, where they go, where old office computers go or school computers go, they bring them to directly to the federal prisons. We tear them down for parts and they sell the parts separately. Kid you not, because that was my department. Kid you not, bro. Let me hit to the Super Chats. Shout out to you, brothers. Let me make sure I don't miss anybody. I know my brother said he got his ticket to the Black Menace for a conclave. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to my man Ray P in the building. He said remote jobs for the win mailing address co soon or coming soon. Shout out to Taylor Made Dreams once again. And my man David. He said they wonder why we why we avoid black women completely acting out overseas no behave no behavior that's for real shout out to my man Jermon once again with the two dollar he said there's a countrywide red alert for her for her uh, currently wow they looking for her for real and shout out to my brother Jeffrey Rice for becoming a member Make sure you guys become a member of our channel because we will be having members only lights as as well for YouTube. Shout out to Kings of Dreams once again. He said, Fax, you, Zoom, TM, D, etc. You have a you have leveled up very true. Shout out to my man Kings once again. He says the grind doesn't stop. YouTube is work, bruh. You say nothing wrong with paying dues, respect. And I respect those who pay their dues too. That's why that's why I was just a fan of a lot of people that I reach out to now. Cause I was like, there's a time for everything, Andre. You and Andre are just focus on what y'all need to focus on, and the doors will open. And they did, man. And so many people have reached out to us that we never knew that watched our channel. Shout out to BMT, Zoom to Thailand, Taylor May Dreams, and all other brothers traveling. Yes, sir. Shout out to you, Brandon. He says, shout out, keep up the Facebook group. Yes, sir. We winning, bros. We winning. Shout out to you. And Brandon also says, shout out to BMT. Once, once. Oh, yeah, he just, I just did that one. And my man in the building. Morning drive coffee break. Shout out to Andre BMT and the rest of these crews. Yes, shout, shout out to you. And my man Jalil with the $20. He said, just showing love. Unk. He said, I, uh, I don't say much, but you and all the brothers are doing the Lord's work. Can't wait to get started with Theo Theo's course. Shout out to Theo Waff. Shout out to him in September. Yes. Shout out to you, brother. Hey, man. It is it, a it, hey, Theo's. Like I said, I was invited in as a silent guest. Man, it's a hundred brothers and sisters off in his class. Man, for real, they deep up in there. They are deep up in there. They're serious about getting that six figure money. Shout out to you, brother. And my man Gregory is in the building once again. He said, Salute Andre. The three uh cases, oh, we, we, I think I read that one in regards to coastal condition. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, brother. I hope I hit everybody's. So we chat. I hope I didn't miss any. Let me scroll down and make sure I didn't miss anybody. I got Wills. I got Timothy. I got Ethan. Kings. I got Green Lantern. Kings. Samyaza in the building. Mr. Jersey himself. I got Myra in the building. Got Jay. Yeah, I got. I think I got everybody now. Thanks for reminding me, brother. 
<laughs> Hawk said, that's not a black woman. <laughs> hey, LGBTQ, y'all gonna have to take that L on that one in Thailand. Y'all gonna have to take that L, man. We don't hear too much from y'all, but on this one in Thailand, yeah, that's y'all. That's all y'all LGBTQ. That's all y'all brothers and sisters. Wade says, he said, I can't believe it. America is weird. I wish I, I could uh I could leave, man. Trying to find ways uh how to leave the US for good. The key, the first thing is, is I'm telling you is the top secret, patience. Patience, man, because the door will open, man. It took a minute for my door to open. It's gonna take a minute for your door to open. But when it does, you're gonna be so appreciative. I didn't know how I was gonna do this. I'm just sitting in my cubicle one day. Like I said, I'm making good money. I'm living in Tampa, Florida. I'm riding my convertibles and my, my F-150 truck. I'm living a, a good life. I'm making about 80, 87,000 a year. But I was not happy. I was smashing chicks from all over the world because I live in Florida. Still wasn't happy. But I didn't know how I was going to get it done. But I started watching Taylor Make Dreams. I started watching Ace Live. He had just started. I am Marwa. Uh, uh, Jabril with a uh, 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 passport heavy you know i started watching these brothers and it just encouraged me even though i didn't know where how i was going to do it just to be encouraged by seeing other black men doing their thing the universe just opened up the doors slowly but surely and i started traveling and then when i got here i was working online like you guys are doing like many of you guys are doing and then that's when ace suggested youtube so i was doing both and then all of a sudden i just switched over to youtube and then all the other uh our business opportunities came about while I was here. While, not while, but while. Yeah, while I was here. Shout out to my man, Chaos Reigns. Make sure you guys subscribe and watch Chaos Reigns. Yes, sir. Shout out to you, brother. He's always got great topics. And I always get your emails as well. And that's the cool part. He said, get the likes up. Likes are free. We are 140 people. Get them up, guys. Get them up. He said, Andre, uh... Andre shows that even when it seems like you have it all, you can still be dissatisfied. Yes, I'm always on learner mode. And I, one thing I learned when I was sitting in that cubicle, I, I wasn't happy. You can have everything, dude. I had a nice house in, in, uh, in Riverview. Riverview is like a suburb of Tampa. I got the Ford F-150 Harley Davidson edition. I got my convertible Saab, old school. So I'm riding through the city on the weekends, enjoying my my ball here, blowing in the wind. I man, with a convertible, you just drive for no reason at all. You just driving just to be driving. I'm smashing chicks from all different nationalities. All dude, if they were from somewhere on the planet, they gonna end up in Florida, and you gonna end up having a chance to smash them. And I really wasn't happy. I didn't have any peace. I'm still dealing with the, the stress of this. Didn't realize how stressed out I was until I left the States. And I'm talking about just, you know, a trip here, a trip there. And I started realizing, man, I got I to gotta get out of here. But the first one to do it all was, yep, Charles Tyler. Yep. I don't remember uh, 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 Morris. I don't remember Morris in Ace Adventures. Yep. In Thailand. Yeah, I do remember that. A blue the door is open for me. Shout out to them. Shout out to you still. Great live. Let's wrap this one up, guys. We've been here for two hours, 35 minutes. I know some of you guys got to get to sleep. It's 12 o'clock, a little after 12. Let's let you guys get some rest. Thank you guys for being here with me. And we talking about the countries in which Diddy can steal without have to worry about it. We didn't talk about Cuba either, but we don't want to put Cuba on that list. But extradite. You know, countries where they will not send him back to the States. Shout out to Ace Live. Ace, uh, Ace is Ace Live, who is introducing me to a uh, to the black man travels space. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been doing Ace Man since woo, woo, for a hot minute. Bedtime, big bro. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's why I told you guys my story and my experience in, in the federal indictments and where, where where did he stands and what's going on 
from the perspective of somebody that's been through it. It's one thing for people to talk about it. It's another thing to be the person that been through it. To be able to tell you the, the whole story of what's going on step by step with Diddy. Yeah, it ain't looking good. If he if he gets out of this one, man, oh, it's a miracle. Shout out to my brother in the building. Glad that you're here. Let's go. As well as my man, Carlos. He says, you simply need to go where you are welcome. Yes, sir. Where you are welcome. Just learn to do the do's and don'ts. He said, I'm in Germany. Shout out to Germany, man. Uh, he said, now learning a new country, man. Shout out to you. He said, Inspired Truth Broadcast. Shout out to you, brother. Good night, y'all. Good night, you guys. Once again, my name is Andre of Andre and Andrea's Love Crossing Borders. You guys have a great evening. I'm up out of here. You already know we're about to have you guys do the three minutes of thickness. We're going to end it with three minutes of thickness. Baby, tan lejos y tan cerca Como enero y diciembre Es que parcha teniendo la misma mente Tu bebé ponte bien suelta Que sé como tú te sientes Con las ganas de ser mala y decente En la madrugada te encanta Cuando el bebé tuyo a ti te canta Que hasta la cama la ponemos a temblar Tus padres hablan Pero no saben nada más Porque tú sientes conmigo Adrenalina, baby, andote que sigo yeah. Pues baby, pa' que sigo Si no escuchan lo que digo Es de nosotros a ver cómo Con las ganas de ser mala y decente.